Small size, low power requirements and everything that you may need from a decent office workstation in 2022. These are part of the promises surrounding the release of the Nofflink M500 with 10th generation Intel Core i7 CPU, but is it good enough? Let's inspect! Hi everybody, good to meet you, Michael my name, and uh, we inspect a lot of cool tech on the channel. By the way, don't get tricked by the t-shirt, I'm not a gamer, and the mini PC that we're trying out today is clearly not a gamer-oriented device, but it's pretty interesting because even at peak moments it wouldn't consume more than 30 watts, which makes it super power efficient, although inside it has a core i7 CPU. But you know that very often ads and specifications are one thing and real life performance and the overall user experience could be on the other side. Therefore, the point of today's episode is to show you all the strengths but also all the weaknesses of the Nofflink M500. For the record, the config that I have here, rocking 16GB RAM and 512GB M2 storage, is very exciting in terms of price, because being around $530, this is one of the most affordable PCs, doesn't matter mini or not, having a Core i7 CPU. But give me a few minutes of time and I'm gonna show you that there are some good reasons about it. Nofflink is a company I hear about for the first time, but they claim that they're in business since 2008, so let's not waste any further seconds and get our hands dirty. Unboxing. Well, this is how the mini PC is packed. Looks like it's well protected in its case, but honestly, what we see so far is kind of unimpressive. In the end of the day, we're here because of the tech and not the cardboard, so let's hope the engineering grade of the hardware itself is on a different level. This a user guide looks interesting, although it's hard to teach someone about using Windows just within a few pages. The power adapter, it is a GAN power adapter, understand small with good quality. No VESA mount included, however we have a SATA flex cable in case you're looking to hood another HDD or SSD. Here's the M500, a well-built and solid-feeling mini PC. No surprise that the case is done out of metal. This is first of all durable, and secondly, the whole housing acts as a large heat sink. The idea is to stress less the active cooling and maintain cooler operation, which at the same time will be quieter. Bunch of ports included, I'm pretty sure you will never run out of USB ports. I've recently tested the latest coming from Morphine and it didn't have any USB 3 capable ports at the front. Distribution here is more balanced, so that's a nice thing. Digital output for monitor, you can of course use a Type-C video output or the HDMI. Up to three monitors can be connected at the same time. Since we've seen the obvious, let's get to know what is inside in terms of hardware before we disassemble and check on the repairability status. The CPU the Core i7-10510U, RAM can be 8 or 16GB DDR4, storage options are also different varying from 128 gigs and reaching up to 1TB, advanced Wi-Fi module with Wi-Fi 6 support, a PCI Express M2 slot, an extra port for SSD, Bluetooth 5.2, a GAN power adapter and weight of close to 200 grams. Specifications are good, and this mini computer happens to be as good as most modern PCs and other office computers which are not intended for heavyweight gaming or GPU-intensive tasks. Because most of the components are alright. The CPU, for instance, being Core i7, the 10th generation, it's very power savvy. But I need to underline that this particular model, the 10610U, it's designed for laptops, so that's why you're gonna see that good of power efficiency. Drawback is the slightly lower than usual base frequency, but in peak moments it can go beyond 4 GHz and deliver the necessary performance. Well, uh, still I need to underline that it's not as good as certain desktop solutions, and for instance the 12th generation of the Core i3 can easily put it to shame in terms of overall performance. As for RAM inside, we have two DIMM slots, uh, maximum capacity is 64 gigabytes, but truth is it on the website you wouldn't find such a configuration, possibly because Nofflink tried to offer you 
the best possible price right now they can guarantee it for the 32 gig edition. And last but not least, the GPU, perhaps the biggest bottleneck in terms of overall performance, because we count here on the integrated in the CPU Intel HD Graphics 620, which is not quite remarkable about its performance. Now, after having explained everything important about the hardware, let us check on the internal layout and figure out about repairability and upgradability. There are two screws holding the top cover, a small Phillips screwdriver is going to do the job and we are ready to explore the internals in no time. I was wondering why the bottom area of the housing is always warmer and this layout explains a lot. The CPU is located at the bottom, perhaps with some more patience you can reach out to each and every bit of the box. The common tasks that we can apply here change the storage, we can see the M2 device and the RAM, there only are 16 GB DIMMs. Upgrading is apparently easy, doesn't require any advanced skills. You have the option to add one more SATA SSD by using this flex cable, it gets hooked to the top cover. Apparently Nothlink have gone for some budget-friendly components to save some dollars, as long as durability is in place, which I expect, that's alright. It's also clear that whatever is integrated on the system board requires replacement of the system board itself in case of a failure, RAM and storage you can service by yourself. Few words about the software. Unlike the way it is with smartphones, where Android OS may have different skins and flavors, things are much more static with Windows and the experience that Windows 10 provides is almost the same no matter where you use it. The operating system is pre-installed, licensed, we have Windows 10 Pro, it has no bloatware from what I've discovered. If you're worried about the possibility of someone collecting your data or something, feel free to perform a clean installation and reach that peace of mind. The device is fully compliant with Windows 11, which is well confirmed by the system requirements by Microsoft, but also through this system checker. After some decisions that Microsoft have recently taken around Windows 11, I'd recommend not to hurry with upgrading to the new generation. Windows 10 is widely supported, will continue to be for a number of years, and upgrading is much easier than downgrading in case at some point you figure out that you want to go back. Synthetic benchmarks confirm that there's nothing amazing about this processor in the overall setup, but also confirm that we have a decent power horse for office work, presentations, photo editing, basic graphics tasks, even some light video editing. Speaking of which, the Nothlink M500 will clearly need a lot more time as compared to a system with a, a faster processor and b, more powerful GPU with dedicated memory. Multimedia experience is good, videos run smoothly, no matter the resolution. Ok, 4K at 60fps at very high bitrate may sometimes feel choppy if I use the wrong player. And YouTube seems to skip some frames using Microsoft Edge, but video playback is generally excellent because the processor supports most modern video playback codecs on a hardware level. Web browsing, as expected, very good. Sites are loading very quickly. Connectivity? Also, without remarks, I've used Bluetooth for connecting a gamepad and wireless headset at the same time. Prolonged usage is fine and the connection is stable. Speaking of gaming, here are some examples. In 4K resolution, Asphalt 9 was behaving surprisingly stable with most of the graphics details being on. I was actually prepared for worse performance, so racing games will be just fine as long as you don't require anything too heavy. Lightweight titles like Beach Buggy Racing will of course also run fine and these are no-brainers for most current iCore setups. Drawbacks. There is no Thunderbolt support. The power supply is external, but a good fact is that it is a GAN power unit, so it's very small. And the slightly inconvenient 3.5mm port where not all the sizes of cables are gonna fit in. For the price asked, maybe we can do the calculations. Around 300 bucks for the CPU, and 16 gigs of RAM is currently around 60 bucks, and 512 M2 device another 50. And if we think of the system boards, the peripheral options with all these ports which can use for connectivity, the case, the fan inside, and the operating system which is pre-installed, I believe for 530 bucks this is 
a pretty good deal. Not as polished and fancy as some other brands, but definitely delivers the promised performance. So, what do you think? Do you like this model? Do you think the Novlink M500 is a great deal? Or you probably have other suggestions. My opinion, for office work, home entertainment, or, or having a highly portable system in a non-laptop shape, supporting up to three monitors, not bad at all. So, I would love to hear your opinion, and of course, if you have some follow-up questions, be invited to comment in the section below the video. As usual, link to the product is somewhere in the description. And I really hope you have enjoyed this review, learned something new, and it was fun to watch. And if that's the case, mission accomplished, so reward us. Thank you very much. My name is Michael. Look forward to see you in the next episode.